Uh, what are you looking forward to the most at this meeting? I think what I'm probably, what I'm looking forward to the most this year is uh, the ways in which historians will engage in debate, will engage in disagreement about interpretation, about how we do history, how we think about history, and we set this up as the theme, uh, disagreement, debate, discussion. Uh, in part, quite frankly, because of where we're meeting. Uh, we were trying to very consciously suggest to people who live and work in a different part of Washington uh, that it's possible to disagree constructively, uh, that disagreement and debate, in fact, lead to uh, smarter ideas, smarter policies, and that uh, to do so with civility is the way to move things forward. What's new at uh, the annual meeting this year? Well, it's not a, I think it's not such a question of what's new as what we're trying to build on. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year we did a lot with uh, digital history, digital humanities, uh, thinking about the digital environment and digital tools for history, and for, for teaching, and for research, and we're building on that this year. We have a digital, work, digital history workshop, uh, there's a that camp uh, associated with the meeting, so we have a lot more this year, and even last year we had more than in the past. We're also building upon uh, what we've started doing with uh, diversifying careers for historians. Uh, last year we had a whole string that we were calling the Malleable PhD, uh, which we will have again this year, uh, but again an even larger string, and this is an important focus of the AHA right now, is uh, helping our uh, graduate students to think more broadly about uh, what they can do with their PhD, uh, what their PhD qualifies them to do and trying to help graduate programs think about how to train students more broadly. So these are both things that are relatively new to the AHA meeting but certainly not completely new this year. Uh, we have one session that I'm uh, especially proud of in terms of thinking about our theme on disagreement and debate and that is on the history wars of the 1990s. Uh, debates that historians had over the place of theory, the place of narrative, and we'll have uh, four prominent historians discussing this on Friday. Uh, part of what, uh, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I wonder if you could tell us about the uh, new website uh, for the American Historical Association, which uh, has been built over the course of the past year, yes. and the new uh, social networking feature, uh, AHA right. Communities. Well, this is again something that is important to the future of all scholarly societies, which is how we operate in a digital environment. Uh, I think, as you know, there are people who worry that the digital environment is a threat to. Uh, exist to such organizations as scholarly societies, research libraries, which is the background I came from before the AHA, and we see it rather as an opportunity uh, that it's not as if social networking replaces a conference. Social networking enhances a conference. It helps people to get in touch with one another before the in-person interaction, and it allows us to continue the in-person interaction afterwards. So our AHA community site, for example, enables members to set up groups to discuss just about anything relating to our discipline. So if somebody wants to set up on our community site a conversation or a group to have an ongoing conversation about something that comes out of the annual meeting, uh, a session can have a beginning online and a continuing uh, existence online after the annual meeting. So the whole idea of the AHA communities and our new website in general is to try to broaden participation uh, in the AHA, broaden participation in the discipline. Uh, we are trying to broaden notions of advocacy. So our new website has a section on advocacy where we're trying to emphasize not just what we do in Washington, but the advocacy that takes place among our members across the country. You've been uh, AHA director, uh, executive director for the past three and a half years. Uh, looking back on uh, your your time at the AHA, what's your proudest moment been? It's only three and a half years. I haven't had time for proud moments yet. Uh, that that happens after you you build more. Uh, but I think that it's not a question of a moment so much as a question of things that we're beginning to accomplish and. 
Uh, it's not what I accomplish, it's what our staff and our committees accomplish together. And one thing that I think we are accomplishing together is uh, move is taking substantial steps towards broadening uh, career perspectives among not just our students but our faculty members and this is extremely important. Uh, we would like to expand the, the number of tenure track positions that are available in colleges and universities but given the budgetary environment uh, that's not going to happen very soon and we want our students to have as many opportunities as they possibly can have and this is something that I have been extremely proud of uh, that not just our council and our staff have accomplished, but a variety of members of the AHA have been working on this uh, for a few years. So that's one thing. I think second is the extent to which we have begun to take greater advantage of the digital environment, uh, take greater advantages of things that we can do as historians that we couldn't do before. And uh, this is something that scholarly societies in every discipline are doing, and we're part of a larger movement there. Mm -hmm. And of course, part of that uh, uh, career-oriented track is uh, the AHA Tuning Project, which is uh, yes, which is designed to. Uh, well, you, you can tell us. Uh, well, the Tuning Project is something that I am extremely proud of. When you ask what the proudest moment is, in some ways, one of the proudest moments uh, is that ongoing moment in our Tuning Project, where we have. 60 faculty members from colleges and universities across the country uh, and places uh, that vary from little prestige to much prestige, from rural to urban, uh, community colleges, four-year colleges, uh, working with colleagues, with students, and in some ways even much more important with people in the community that include employers, uh, nonprofit employers, uh, private sector employers, to help history students more effectively articulate what they learn as history majors. Uh, this is crucial because what we, what we have found out in this project is that many of our students know things, can do things that employers value, but neither we nor they uh, have been very good at articulating these things. And this is a central aspect of what the Tuning Project is all about, as well as trying to then think about how we can create a unified curriculum that enables us to articulate these outcomes. Uh, one last question. Um, what is uh, p one piece of advice you would give, it can be several, uh, to uh, somebody who's attending AHA for the first time this year? Have fun. <laughs> uh, I, and I, I think that is important because People think of the AHA meeting as a high anxiety environment, people looking for jobs in a tight job market. Uh, we all know that academic conferences, uh, that there are stereotypes about people looking at other people's badges. But quite frankly, a conference like this is a cornucopia of opportunities to drop in on sessions on topics that are not even related to what you do. It gives you an environment, it gives you an opportunity to hear what's going on across the discipline in a wide variety of areas. I, I used to have a colleague who never went to a session in his field. Uh, his theory was if the papers are good, he'll see them published eventually. He wanted to use the AHA as an opportunity to dabble, mm. uh, to see what's going on in places where he otherwise wouldn't be reading. So that's why I say people should have what I would describe as intellectual fun. Uh, peruse the uh, publications uh, area, see what's being published, drop in on sessions. Uh, just use this as an opportunity to spend three or four days learning what people are doing and meeting new people. Okay, that's, um, 